Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. So today we are going to start with the chapter Hearts and Hands which is written by O. Henry. This is a picture of O. Henry and uh, this is a chapter which is for the ICC students for class 9 and class 10. Before we start with the chapter, it is necessary that we know something about the poet, uh, something about the author. So let's see. Hearts and Hands was originally published under his pseudonym Sidney Porter. So the real name of O. Henry is William Sidney Porter. Okay. So he wrote with a pseudonym that means he took a pen name which is O. Henry in 1902. The story is full of twists and wordplay. So this is very important because all of the stories of O. Henry has a lot of twist in it in the climax you see something very strange happening okay it will shock you as was o henry's own life so o henry's he, uh, the uh, the life of o henry was also quite uh, it was full of twists and you know awkward moments he was sentenced to serve five years in federal prison so he had to spend his life in the prison for how many years for five years at the age of 15, Porter, that is William Sidney Porter, left school and started working in a drugstore. And uh, he also had worked in the bank. And after 1897, he was convicted of embezzling money and was sentenced to five years imprisonment. What do you mean by this embezzlement? Embezzlement means stealing. He was convicted. He was a convict. He was convicted that he has stolen somebody else's money. After fleeing to Honduras, then returning to Austin to be with his sick wife, where he turned himself in. So when he was take, when he was imprisoned, he started writing stories. Why did he write the stories? So that he could earn money for his daughter. Okay. So after being released from the prison in 1901, he changed his name to O. Henry so that he could hide his identity. You know, he had spent his life in the prison for five years. So he wanted to hide or uh, shield his true identity. So he took the pseudonym O. Henry, okay, which makes his unexpected sources of compassion particularly poignant. This story is featured in the unreliable narrator. Okay, now we will move on to the story. See, first we will try to understand the setting of the story. That is where the story was held at Denver. What is Denver? Where is Denver? Denver is the capital of Colorado and American metropolis. See in this map, this is American map. This is Colorado. This is the place where Colorado can be seen. So the capital of this place was Denver. Okay. We will be talking about Washington. We will be talking about Colorado, that is Denver and Kansas. These three places we are going to deal with. See the whole story takes place in a train which has left which has started its journey towards the east. It is going to the east. And this place, this Denver, is the place where the whole story takes place. Okay, in the train. The train stops at Denver. People get in inside the train. And then the whole story takes place. Okay. Now, there was an influx. Influx means a lot of passengers. Whenever a train stops, you see you know, a number of people gets down. Then a, a number of people get inside the train. So there was an influx of passengers. A number of people got inside the train into the coaches of the eastbound B&M Express. So this is the name of the train. I told you that the story takes place on a train and this is the B&M Express eastbound. That means the train was going towards the east. As I told you, the train was going towards the east. Okay. Now in one coach, there sat a very pretty young woman dressed in elegant, elegant means very gracefully she was dressed, very beautifully she was dressed with a lot of taste and surrounded by all the luxurious comforts of an experienced traveler. Experienced traveler means he, she was very fond of traveling. She traveled a lot from this place to that place and she was a very, you know, uh, he was an elegant woman. She was from a rich family perhaps. She was used to carrying expensive stuffs with her. Okay. So among the newcomers were two young men, one of handsome presence with a bold, frank countenance, countenance means appearance. So now two people, when the train stopped at Denver, there were two people who got into the train. We are talking about these two people. Among these two people, one person 
was very handsome was a young man okay he was very handsome very beautiful uh, i mean very smart bold and frank and uh, uh, and his manners were quite posh the other a ruffled that means the other person was a bit upset glum faced person that means he looked gloomy and sad and serious heavily built and roughly dressed questions can come that uh, please describe the uh, two men who got inside the train okay so we are going to describe we are going to talk about these two people how they looked one one looked smart the other other one was ruffled glum faced heavily built roughly dressed these are the words that you will write in your answer now these two people were handcuffed together this is an important part of the story what do you mean by handcuffed together when a person is taken to the jail the policeman uses this kind of handcuffs so that the 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 criminal cannot run away okay so this is the handcuff now these two people who got inside the train were handcuffed to one another that means one hand of the first person and the other hand of the second person were handcuffed with these handcuffs okay that is they were linked to one another as they passed down the aisle aisle means this is the place which you call an aisle okay when you get inside the train over here you can walk between the seats isn't it you can walk between the seats so this is the aisle where you can walk so these two people who had got inside the train who were handcuffed to one another they walked through the aisle of the coach the only vacant seat that means the only empty seat that was over there offered was a reversed one facing the attractive young woman we already know that there was a young woman sitting inside the train already now at denver these two people get inside the train and there were no vacant or empty seats except the one opposite to the young lady so they come to that place to take the seat now here the linked couple now a question can come what do you mean by linked couple the two people who got inside the train at denver were called the linked couple why because they were connected by the help of the handcuff one hand of one person and the other hand of the other person was linked okay with the help of the handcuffs so they sat obviously they have to sit in one place only if your hand is tied to the hand of your friend then you cannot sit apart isn't it so you will sit together so they sat together just opposite to the young woman the young woman's glance fell upon them with a distant swift disinterest now obviously this woman is a very elegant lady okay from a, a very luxurious family so she did not want to look at these two people but she just looked once with a distant swift disinterest just a glance just one look she gave to them then with a lovely smile brightening her countenance and a tender pink tingeing her rounded cheeks now see as soon as she looked at these two people she recollected that one of the two was her friend long lost friend and she was feeling a bit shy pink tingeing of her cheeks means she felt a bit shy when you feel shy you will see that your cheeks turn as the take a pinkish glow okay it turns red because you blush because you are feeling shy so suddenly the woman feels shy this shows that maybe with one of these two men she had a kind of love affair or maybe she used to love this person okay when she spoke her voice okay uh, she held out her little gray gloved hand so she held out her gray gloved hand that means she was wearing gloves which were gray in color and she wanted to shake hands with the person whom he knew whom she already knew when she spoke her voice full sweet and deliberate deliberate means she was conscious she knew that she was a very elegant woman she could talk very well okay she was not nervous proclaimed that its owner was accustomed to speak and be heard so when she spoke she already knew that when she spoke people listened because she was a good speaker she could speak well in public okay all the words that are written in red are the meanings of the difficult words you can write them down in your uh, books if you want with a pencil well mr easton if you will make me speak first so we come to know that one person of the linked couple was mr easton so there this linked couple among among them between them one was called mr easton and this mr easton was known to the young woman 
don't you ever recognize old friends when you meet them in the west so when you meet people in the west don't you recognize them when you meet somebody uh, in some other place for example if you meet your friend in dikha won't you recognize him or her obviously you will recognize so the woman asks her long lost friend don't you recognize me the younger man roused himself roused himself means he suddenly gets excited sharply at the sound of her voice seemed to struggle with a slight embarrassment he was embarrassed why if you are handcuffed and if you suddenly meet your friend you will be embarrassed because you will you will start thinking that what will the other person think i'm handcuffed am i a criminal what she she is going to think which he threw off instantly and then clasped that means shook hands her fingers with her with his left hand now with which hand does mr easton shake her hand with his left hand it is miss fair child he said with a smile i will ask you to excuse the other hand it's otherwise engaged just at present see my other hand is engaged is a bit busy what does he mean from here he tries to say that look my right hand is a bit busy because it is handcuffed so i cannot shake hands with that so that is why i have to shake my hands with my left hand he slightly raised his right hand bound at the wrist by the shining bracelet to the left one of his companion so we know that his right hand was tied or handcuffed to the left hand of the other person so he shows that see my right hand is a little bit busy it is handcuffed so i am shaking hands with the left the glad look in the girl's eyes slowly changed to a bewildered horror now obviously if you see your friend with a handcuff in his hand then you will obviously be, be very scared you know you will start thinking that my friend has turned into a criminal my goodness he is going to the jail his hand is handcuffed normally criminals wear handcuffs isn't it it is not a bracelet that you are wearing it is not a um, you know it is not a kind of uh, bangle that you are wearing it is a it is it is a hint of a criminal it is, it is a bracelet or it is a handcuff which a criminal is seen to wear when the police drags you to jail then you wear a handcuff the glow faded from her cheeks so she becomes very sad she is sad why because she thinks her friend is a criminal her lips parted in a vague relaxing distress distress means she is worried because she is afraid that her friend is a criminal eastern with a little laugh as if amused was about to speak again when the other forestalled him when the other means when the other person that is the other one who was handcuffed with the with mr eastern there was another person who was handcuffed with mr eastern so now this person starts speaking who is this person that gloomy that glum faced person who was very you know uh, roughly built that person starts speaking forestalled means stopped eastern from speaking and he himself starts speaking the glum faced man had been watching the girl's countenance with veiled glances what do you mean by veiled glances veiled glances means he was not looking directly at the girl or mr eastern but he was listening to what they were speaking from his keen shrewd eyes keen shrewd eyes means he is a very clever person this glum faced man is a clever person and carefully he was listening to the conversation between miss fairchild and mr eastern suddenly he starts speaking what does he say you will excuse me for speaking miss but i see you are acquainted with the marshal so now this man the glum faced man starts speaking and what does he say he says that miss fairchild uh, you must be a close friend to the marshal so according to this glum faced man who is mr eastern mr eastern is the marshal mr eastern is an officer is in military is in the military forces he is a very high ranking officer in the military forces if you will ask him to speak a word for me when we get to the pen pen means prison he will do it and it will make things easier for me there so according to the glum faced person he that means the glum faced person himself was the criminal and mr eastern was the marshal was a police officer or the army officer and Mr Easton was actually taking the criminal to the prison okay and if miss fairchild would say some good words or request mr easton to you know minimize the tenor or minimize num or minimize the tenor of uh, 
these criminals serve in the prison then my it might happen that mr east would listen to him he is taking me to leven where are they going they are going to leven what prison a prison in kansas i already told you that we will be talking about kansas so kansas is a place where this prison is present leven what prison is in kansas it is 7 years for counterfeiting what do you mean by counterfeiting for what crime is the person being taken to jail the person was being taken to jail because of counterfeiting that means he has deceived somebody he has put up false documents or forged something or done something wrong that is why he was taken to jail and for how many years would he have to stay there for 7 years now let's see the map again this is washington we know this is washington okay and this is our denver so there is the east bound express which is going towards the east so from denver they are going to the east that means in kansas kansas is the place where levenworth prison is present so they are going to to the prison so that the criminal can be put to jail okay now oh said the girl with a deep breath and returning color so that is what you are doing out here oh that means you are not the criminal that means mr eastern you are not the criminal you are taking the criminal to the prison a marshal so now the the woman is very much satisfied you know fascinated that okay the person whom for whom i have a kind of feeling or maybe the person whom i i, ha- I have a deep love for that person is a marshal that person works in the police in the army my dear miss fairchild so first miss fairchild had thought that his friend that her friend was a criminal now she has started thinking that no this person is this is the marshal so she is very satisfied my dear miss fairchild said eastern calmly i had to do something money has a way of taking wings unto itself this is an important line you may be asked what do you mean by this money has a way of taking wings unto itself that means whenever you have loose cash whenever you have some money in your hands you tend to spend it isn't it you you buy this you buy that you buy a plate of biryani you go and buy some chips and you spend the money so normally whenever you have money you tend to spend it so as if it will fly away if you have money okay and you know that it takes money to keep step with our crowd in washington so if we have so the person is living in washington so normally if you have to live in washington you have to compete with the people you will have to have some money okay so that you can keep yourself alive i saw this opening in the west and well a marshal ship isn't quite as high a position as that of an ambassador but okay so he says that at least i am not as good as an ambassador an ambassador has a lot of money you know he is paid much more than a marshal he goes on saying this maybe the uh, this woman had a had a feeling for some other ambassador or something that is why they are talking about an ambassador maybe he wanted to mean that i have become a mar- marshal but at least i am not an ambassador and not that rich the ambassador say who is an ambassador representative we have no indian representative to different other countries that is an ambassador or you have representatives for certain products that is an ambassador said the girl warmly doesn't call any more he didn't didn't ever have done so you want to know that and so now you are one of these dashing western heroes why western heroes because you know working in the police or in the army is something that is very adventurous you carry a gun okay you wear a nice and smart uniform so that is why you are like a hero it is far better than being an ambassador and you ride and shoot go into all kinds of dangers so that is obviously adventurous that's different from the washington life you have been missed from the old crowd so obviously you were missed i always have missed you but over here you were obviously enjoying your life you are having such a nice adventurous life the girl's eyes fascinated went back so now the girl is fascinated by what he what she has come to know that okay my friend my dear friend is a marshal over here and is spending a very adventurous life went back widening a little to rest upon the glittering handcuffs so she again looks at the handcuffs with a lot of fascination this time don't you worry about them miss said the other man all marshals handcuff themselves to their prisoners to keep them from getting away mr easton knows his business so see the now the glum faced man again starts speaking he says that normally a criminal is handcuffed with the 
policeman or with the marshal so that he cannot run away they are traveling on a train so any time the criminal can just run away in one station isn't it that is why the marshal has handcuffed himself with me so that i cannot run away who says this the glum faced man will you see will we see you again in washington so the girl now wants to meet the marshal again and again that is she wants to meet mr easton not soon i think said easton my butterfly butterfly days are over what do you mean by butterfly days are over that means my happy my days for enjoyment is over now i have to work i have to earn money i love the west said the girl irrelevantly her eyes why did, does she love the west because she does not want to leave this place she is very much attached to the place as well as the person mr easton will now live in the west in washington and so she also wishes to live in the same place with him her eyes were shining softly she looked away out of the car window so her eyes smiled she was feeling a feeling a lot fascinated with the with the man and she looks outside the train she began to speak truly and simply without the gloss of style and manner now she goes on speaking about herself mama and i spent the summer in denver so we lived in denver uh, all the summer time we lived over here she went home a week ago because father was likely ill she had to go back home because father was ill i could live and be happy in the west i always wanted to stay back in the west because now she has more reasons to stay here because now he know she knows that mr easton is also here she has a kind of feeling maybe a feeling a bit of love for this person okay i could live and be happy in the west i think the air here agrees with me money isn't everything but people always misunderstand things and remain stupid so, so she understands that no money is not everything life has to have adventure has to have something like this like being a marshal living a life with a marshal she wants to stay back say mr marshal growled the glum faced man this isn't quite fair i am needing a drink so now the glum faced man again says that uh, growl means he complained that please i need a drink that is i want to smoke would you allow me a smoke would you let me there is a separate place to smoke in the train okay it is called a smoker so you have to go there to smoke you cannot just smoke anywhere so he requests the marshal that is mr easton if he would take him to the smoker so that he could smoke take me in the smoker now won't you i am half dead for a pipe so i just wish to smoke i'm dying please allow me to smoke now the bound travelers that means the two the mr easton and the glum faced man rose to their feet easton with the same slow smile on his face so they get up they they are going to the smoker i can't deny a petition a request for tobacco i cannot just uh, you know deny this request she, he wants to have a smoke so i want to give it although he is a criminal he has his desires it is the one friend of the unfortunate this man is an unfortunate man you see he is a criminal he is going to the prison so he wants a smoke i have to allow him goodbye miss fairchild duty calls you know he held out his hand for a farewell so they bid goodbye to each other now it's too bad for you are not going east she said reclothing so she is going to be east and uh, you know this man that is Mr Easton whom she has started loving a lot she uh, this person Mr Easton is going to the west so their uh, ways are going to part they are not going to meet each other soon so she wishes it is too bad that you are not going east if Mr Easton had been to the east then obviously Miss Fairchild would be very happy she said reclothing herself with manner and style she, so she gathers herself again with all her manners and style but you must go on to levenworth i suppose i think you have to go to levenworth because you have the criminal with you okay then nothing can be done work calls yes said easton i must go to levenworth the two men siddle siddle means they walk awkwardly why awkwardly because their hands are tied and there is a very small space in the aisle okay that is why they walked awkwardly down the aisle into the smoker the two passengers in a seat now this part is the climax you have you will have questions Uh, from the climax because o henry's works always have a very strange very shocking climax okay the end part of the story what is it the two passengers in a seat nearby had heard most of the conversation now in a train you have other passengers also they were listening to their this conversation said one of them that marshal is a good sort of chap so one person there were two people over there also so one person says this marshal is a very good man 
that marshal is a good sort of chap some of these western fellows are all right now these marshals from the west are very good hearted you see one of the passengers comment this what did the other person say the other passenger pretty young to hold an office like that isn't he asked the other so the other person says that yes he is so young to be a marshal he are, he is working in a such a you know prestigious post and he is so young now what did the uh, what did the other passenger the first passenger reply young exclaimed the first speaker why oh didn't you catch on didn't you understand say did you ever know an officer to handcuff a prisoner to his right hand so the other passenger corrected the mistake saying mr eastern was not the marshal he was the convict he was the criminal because no marshal would handcuff his own right hand no no marshal no police officer will handcuff his own right hand because right hand is the is the hand which you can use at in in times of need so you will not tie that hand up isn't it so you will keep your right hand free if you are a right handed person that is why it, from the way they were handcuffed to one another the right hand of the criminal was tied that means the right hand of which person mr easton was tied which shows very clearly that mr easton was actually the criminal and the clump faced man was the marshal okay he showed his goodness by not humiliating mr easton the criminal in front of his dear friend okay so now important notes first the title and the theme the deceptive appearance all these points are important but you will prepare only one answer that will help you in everything see i have made the answer for you just check and let this be clear because questions can come like identify the significance of the title what is the theme of the story the deceptive appearance okay how we are often uh, we often not understand the reality we are misguided by the appearance the climax of the story all this Uh, questions can come from here so understand this part the plot of the story is related to the theme of showing compassion okay and not judging somebody by their appearances most important point the compassion the compassion in the heart of the marshal he did not although he was taking a criminal to jail mr easton was a criminal whom he was taking to jail but he had this kind of a feeling that kind of compassion or sympathy for this man for the criminal he thought that it was not needed that he would be embarrassed in front of his friend miss fairchild that is why he claimed that he himself was the criminal and mr easton was the marshal so that he was not embarrassed in front of miss fairchild the story begins with two people mr easton and the glum faced man who were handcuffed together it is the handcuffing that leads to the hands part if you are told to identify the significance of the title what comes in the second part the hand hand is important because we come to know about the truth in the story through the handcuffs only by the way they were handcuffed to one another okay which are significant for revealing the true identities of the two men in the end we come to know who is the criminal and who is the marshal how by seeing which hand was tied to which hand of the other person okay so handcuffs were more important miss fairchild was misled by the unnamed man about the identity of mr easton as he wanted to save mr easton from an embarrassing situation why if the question comes why did the marshal the glum faced man say that he was the criminal because he wanted to save the criminal that is mr easton from an embarrassing situation if he revealed that mr easton was the criminal in front of miss fairchild okay then they would be a bit embarrassed that is why he avoided the situation by claiming that he himself was the criminal it was another passenger in the coach who discovered that a marshal would not handcuff his own right hand with that of the convict as was the case there so easton who appeared as a handsome bold man was actually the convict and the rough sad looking man was the marshal so this part is the climax of the story question can come that what is the irony of the story and all that then you will write this part that in reality the two passengers who were sitting there and listening to the conversation they were the one from whom we come to know the truth that in reality who is the criminal and who is the marshal okay it is the hearts part now next what is left hands is done now hearts the hearts part we have to clear it out the meaning of it explains the theme what theme 
that the marshal was compassionate he had a lot of sympathy he was not forced to lie isn't it he did it all by himself it was his choice to claim that he was the criminal just to make the other person good in front of his dear friend so he lied to the woman to save mr easton from humiliation just to save him from humiliation he claimed that he himself was the criminal of being identified in front of an old friend or perhaps a lover the glum faced man proved to have a golden heart this shows the the you know you felt that this man looks so glum so gloomy so sad depressed serious but in reality see her heart was made of gold he had so much compassion sympathy empathy for a, even a criminal okay now last part the word heart is also indicative of a kind of friendship that existed between miss fairchild and mr easton when miss fairchild saw easton what happened she smiled and you know her face she was blushing what does this blushing show that perhaps miss fairchild had some kind of a affair or or kind of a you know deep uh, desire to love this person or already loved this person in the past okay this show this is clear when we see that her cheeks turned pink she blushed as soon as she saw mr easton so i hope this part is clear it is a very beautiful story isn't it of love of compassion of uh, of sympathy of empathy of real humanity okay when when even a, a marshal can think of a criminal they can they can have sympathy they can show sympathy for one another okay it is a very beautiful story i hope you have liked it and i hope that all the lines are clear to you you have understood what kind of questions may come from here and if you have liked it please comment and subscribe and also share it with your friends let them see thank you so much bye bye